viewer discretion is advised. I've been prepared for over a year. Now, I'm ready to kick some asses. And I just left the Fort Wayne Housing Authority dropping off the appropriate paperwork. I said I was going to kick some asses today, and I meant it. Nobody messes with the Zens and gets away with it. Because I will hiss. And claw. And I'll bark loud. Show my teeth and teeth that I'm ready to fight. Good attitude, Ella. The Housing Choice Voucher Program, which is still commonly referred to as Section 8, helps low-income families rent. But in order to get help from the program, families must wait, sometimes years. It's a slower process because of the amount of money that we're spending that we're providing from, from HUD. In Cincinnati, the wait list last opened in September 2019. More than 13,400 people pre-applied. Cincinnati Metropolitan Housing Authority randomly selected 6,500 of them. Once on the wait list, CMHA starts at the top of the list, calling to see if applicants qualify. As the president of Strategies to End Homelessness, Kevin Finn knows how slow it is for low-income families to get help with housing in Cincinnati. Thinking that you're going to solve your housing crisis by signing up for a Section 8 subsidy is kind of like your retirement plan being to win the lottery. It's just not a responsible way or a realistic way of approaching that goal. You know, some renters who use Section 8 vouchers to keep a roof over their head are now struggling to find local landlords who accept them. News Channel 5's Alexandra Cohen has been digging deeper into Middle Tennessee's affordable housing crisis. Today, she met a woman whose frustrating hunt for an apartment brought her to tears. Sharon Barbie is at the end of her rope. I, I have the stolic heart failure. Her rental search has been a humbling experience. My children have had to live with um, their godparents a lot of their lives because I can't afford a bigger place. She has to be out of her home in Hadley Park by November, and she's racing the clock to find a home before her voucher expires. It's becoming more difficult for people with Section 8 vouchers to find a landlord who will accept them. We have no control over that. Landlords uh, make the decision whether they want to accept Section 8 vouchers or not. It is totally up to the owner or the landlord. There is housing available within this market. Um, it's just, it's becoming a little harder to find, we'll be honest, but um, it, it is available. Uh, a lot just depends on, again, where people want to go live and, and how much they have the ability to pay. There is such a demand for places to live that landlords can be picky. Many will not even rent to people who get the government subsidies known as Section 8. Action on investigator Jason Stujanki says it sounds like illegal discrimination, but it's not. Jason? Yeah, well, that's right. Now, many tell me it's hard to find decent housing, even with... And both say multiple landlords mm -hmm. weren't willing to rent to them. 
How many places do you think you got turned down from? Jesus, at least 15. 15 places turned down. If not more. Can you believe it's legal? No, it shouldn't be. It's like I have a plague. It's like we have a plague. Fenley finally found an apartment, but it's on the second floor, hard with a wheelchair. I didn't think it would be this difficult. I really didn't. Hargrove is still looking for a place. She's all but given up, ready to move back to New York, where she says it was actually easier. And he says Section 8 has too much red tape. I now have to get an inspection, you know, wait two weeks. I'm not getting paid. Um, typically, the renter will be in, in the property while you're doing all this. They're going to find something wrong. They always do. You got to get a reinspection. And, uh, you know, it's just difficult when, you know, I'm not Donald Trump or anything. I got to carry these mortgages. I got to pay them. Plus, it's perfectly legal to say no. Would you outlaw it? Would you keep it the way it is? City Council Member Braxton Winston says he feels for the renters. I believe that a, a Section 8 voucher should not preclude anybody uh, from uh, having uh, a safe and secure home in the city of Charlotte. Now, since then, a second council member also plans to look into this. I'll stay on top of it, let you know what happens. And at last check, 13 states and more than 60 cities and counties have outlawed it, but none in the Carolinas. So soon city is like many places across California when it comes to Section 8. That wait list can span years. So in many ways, getting that voucher is like winning the lotto. The problem is not all landlords want that ticket. Linda's landlord is not renewing her lease and legally can do that. Landlords currently have a choice whether to accept Section 8 vouchers, but a piece of legislation making its way through the state capitol would change that. Senate Bill 329 would require every landlord accept Section 8, as well as prohibit denying a tenant for using government assistance. The California Apartment Association represents 2 million rental units. And we're almost to 48% rental housing in California. An owner doesn't have. Arguing SB 329 misplaces a burden of responsibility on the landlord. So you can't just enter the program and know how it works immediately. The housing authorities who oversee the programs, they don't have enough staff or time to educate uh, rental property owners and how the process works. Because I rarely, rarely, rarely get into a fight. And this was one of those times when I had to get into a fight with someone. But I'm okay now. Worst case scenario, I may have to let my renter's insurance pay out to the to the asshole property manager. Also contacted corporate on on that no good asshole and she got her ass kicked pretty much and I recently just found out that it was the new owners who are going to be pretty much liable And this type of discrimination has to stop. Because later today, I plan on contacting my Indiana elected officials, Senator Liz Brown and State Representative Phil Giaquinta, about this. Because we need this type of legislation in the state. California was considering something similar to this back in 2019. And I'm not sure if it passed or not, but 
pretty sure it did. So I'm just 20% confident. But, uh, this is kind of bullshit. Because you know I will continue to fight until someone puts a bullet in me, stabs me in the heart, lungs, or in my stomach. Ella. Something's different. <coughs> I know, Ella. I'm wearing my fight out bit. I know, girl. I know. Why? Kicked one person's ass yesterday. How many more asses are you gonna kick? I don't know, Ella. But you can't watch that language of yours. And quit that whining and crying. Okay? I'm in fight mode. Yeah. Is that good or bad? Definitely bad, Caprice. Only we're all black when I'm about to fight someone or someone has died. Wow. You're pretty shook up on this. Ever since last week. Really were, Ava. Yep. Unless you have watched Queen of the Willis. Very similar to the Ava Willis character. I have my hair tied back. 
That's the only big difference. Because I am ready to fight. And I just put on all black. Because this is going to be a big, big fight. And, and yes, I am talking about street fights. If need be. At 4.37 p.m. June the 17th, 2022, I got this voucher. And have to be in the new unit by September 16th. Now, that is the deadline that I must take. If it's one day late, I'm screwed. Another issue that could be a problem is that and I ran to this when I moved here from Marion that I certified that I am responsible for the security deposit and the amount of the security deposit is between me and the landlord. Now it wasn't in full, but I managed to pay it in full that week. And I don't want to go through that again. This is why I'm going to have to find some money. Well, I got all the paperwork signed, pretty much. Now, I play the fucking waiting game. Pray to God this gets approved, because I really need this. So you got the voucher. What are you going to plan on doing with it? Well, I intend to send it to Gulfview Apartments and turn the paperwork to the Fort Wayne Housing Authority. Oh God, you have no caprice to you and all. I have no idea how bad we really need this because we can't afford to be on the streets of Fort Wayne. Yeah. And if we get approved, that'd be like, wow, you're fucking amazing, Ava. And if not, well, oh well. Well, that's not going to be any a well to it, Caprice. This is serious. Yeah. I mean, giving your pass as a community camp, Caprice. You don't need to be on. We don't need to be on in the streets. You don't need to be outside fighting for food. Yeah, that's true. And here does Ella. Yeah, all right.
Want more Caprice and Ella? Subscribe to our channel and get notified of new videos. Also visit CapriceAndElla.Avazin.com for updates and watch full episodes now in 4K Ultra High Definition.